A Man in a Mare's World, Chapter 3, Part 2. Uh, sister, what is it that you have there? Celestia looked up from the dining hall table, seeing her tired little sister wandering in with a cup of coffee in hand. Seeing her like this always made the white goddess smile with sympathy. Luna does so much in the night. She protects her ponies in and out of dreams and the pressure of work that shows every time that she comes for breakfast. Holding a letter in her hand, Celestia ushered her little sister over. An invitation. It appears that Miss Pie down in Ponyville has requested our audience at a party. A party, you say? By the elements of laughter? Luna walked over to view the invitation herself. How strange. Could this party involve the new arrival of the human sister? It would seem the case, most likely. Isn't it exciting? I have not met a single human in eons. The younger deity nodded. Nor have I, Tia. The last we've seen of their race was just before Equestria was founded. And their race was sadly dying away from the magic that flowed throughout the world. Celestia frowned at the memories, closing her eyes upon the reminiscence of a human named Marcus. The two were close, very, very close. One might even say that they were friends, as ludicrous as that may be for a commoner in royalty. When he passed away, it disheartened Celestia, losing yet another subject that she loved so dearly. But in the end, she honored his wish in keeping Equestria strong and letting it grow to be all it can be. That was a sad time, Luna. Indeed, but now there is hope. Not only is this new arrival a human, but he is a male. The resurgence of the gender has begun! Celestia chuckled at her sister's enthusiasm, putting the invitation down and pulling over a blank parchment to send to Pinkie Pie. Calm down, little sister. We mustn't rush him into something that he may not want any part of. Every creature has his or her right to choose how they live, and while it would help Equestria greatly, I am more intrigued with how Twilight described him. Hmm? Whatever do you mean, Tia? The White Monarch's demeanor grew serious as she wrote. This human, according to the elements of laughter, has adopted the name Scorn. He proclaims himself a Dark Guardian, and such a name can only entail a bleak history. Perhaps even a dangerous one. I do not wish to antagonize this human, but I will also ensure the safety of my subjects, especially now that he has taken his first life. Luna perked up at this news. He... He what? Sister, you don't mean to imply that he has murdered a mare in cold blood. By the circumstances Twilight has explained, the action could be seen as justifiable, but only barely so. But still, a crime like that is met with severe punishment, Tia. No murders have occurred in quite a long while, not ever since we achieved a negative harmony in our land. Be that as it may, it is still possible, Luna. As you say, we are in a time of negative harmony. Threats will always oppose us, and the roots of evil can corrupt my little ponies. We may never achieve positive harmony. So... So what do we do? Celestia rolled up the scroll and held it into the air, engulfing it with her magic and sending it away. We wait until we have the full story, then judge accordingly. For now, let us prepare for the party. Of course, sister. Oh? He has returned, has he? Two eyes peered from the looming shadows of a darkened throne room, looking down upon another as she stood before her. The figure sitting upon her throne was donned with a white coat and the wings and horn of an alicorn. The same traits could be found on the one standing before her, though her fur was a dark blue. Teal blue eyes returned the gaze of the first pair. Yes, sister. I have been informed that he now goes by the alias Scorn. He possesses a new variety of powers and abilities, and quite frankly, capturing him will prove difficult with the elements of harmony growing closer to him as well. Hmm, yes. Let us remain behind for now. If the cards are played right, the seeds of doubt and distrust will grow, and our chance will come much sooner than anticipated. Keep the scouts on standby till then. If what I've heard recently about his whereabouts, we can send them to capture him with ease once he's alone. Right away, sister. Welcome, welcome, welcome! Pinkie Pie stood at the door of Town Hall as she welcomed in all the patrons, giving each a balloon on their way in and tying it to their wrists. As she did this, Fluttershy approached her from the side, tugging at her sleeve. Um, Pinkie, none of my animals have seen him yet. Oh, don't worry, Fluttershy, he's just a bit busy. He's a hero, after all. Lots of crime fighting to do here and elsewhere. He'll be here, though. I know he will. Well, um, okay. 
Fluttershy backed away before going further into the party, mingling with the rest as Pinky kept welcoming in the ponies that resided in Ponyville. Soon she was met with a familiar face from the Everfree. Sakura! I'm so happy that you could show up! Ah, uh, Pinkie Pie, young and eccentric. I come here on behalf with no egocentric. Pinkie tilted her head, trying to make heads or tails of Zakora's rhyme. The human named Score and I know quite well. He was asked me to come and represent while he remains in a shell. Pinkie perked up at that, her eyes shooting straight up. Wait, you know Scorn? Zakora stepped into Sugar Cube Corner, pulling down her hood as Pinkie followed her to the side. Indeed I do. I have been taking care of the human since his arrival was new. For seven years, he has been in my care. Oh wow! So is he at, like, your hut or something right now? Pinky gasped. Does he have, like, a secret cave where he plots his daily crime-fighting routine, like Batmare? Zakora rose an eyebrow. Why do you have many comparisons to Batmare? She then shook her head. Never mind that. No, he does not have a lair. He stays in my hut, where he tends to my bruise with care. Oh, okay. So is he coming? Zakora shook her head. Some of the parties give him pause. I wish I could say, but I cannot reveal the cause. Dark forces he controls, but when vulnerability shows, such as fear, you will undoubtedly find ponies disappear. She ushered to herself. Thus I am here in his stead, to answer questions that linger in your head. That's wonderful news! Both Pinky and Sakura turned to the side, seeing Twilight walking up to them with a yellow unicorn, with a fiery-styled mane and tail in tow. I have a few questions of my own that I'd like to ask about Scorn. Do you mind? We can take a seat over there. Yes, I can answer, but I will not strike his privacy as a lancer. I will answer primitive questions, but none that will cause tension. Twilight hummed before nodding. That's fine. I can always ask the more deeper questions to him if I can. I'll just go over the basics. She motioned to the mare standing beside her. Oh, and this here Sunset Shimmer. She opened up an alchemy lab a little ways down from where my library is. Sunset held out her hand, shaking Zakora's. It's a pleasure to finally meet you, Zakora. As Twilight said, I'm Sunset Shimmer. I was the one who she helped... Well, reform, and integrate the Equus Earth technology into Equestria. The pleasure is all mine. If you have an alchemy lab, my assistance will be given without anything to deny. Oh, well, I'll have to take you up on that. Twilight said that you were good with potions and brews. That I am. But let's settle and discuss the human that dwells. Let us begin before the ringing of the dinner bells. Oh shit! Scorn jumped back from the cauldron as it puffed out a cloud of pink smoke. Watching it dissipate into the air, he looked back in, watching the mixture carefully before consulting Zakora's alchemy book. Uh, I think that's right. Is it supposed to be brown? He looked back in. Kind of a bluish tint to it, so... I think that's right. He flipped through a few pages as he picked up three individual vials of different serums. Studying the labels, then examining the book again, he poured in the orange one, waiting for a reaction. Oh. <sighs> okay, I guess not. Scorn immediately fell to the ground on reflex, thinking the cauldron was going to explode. He covered his head, then rose when he heard the knocking again, this time coming from the door. He blinked as he stood up, donning a suit once more as he walked to the window to peek out at who it was. His heart dropped instantly when he found it to be a group of trained guards from the Celestial Empire. Oh shit. He turned and rushed back inside as the knocking turned to banging. Flying up to the tallest window in the hut, he smashed through it, cruising down to the ground as the guards all swarmed the interior of the building. Hitting the ground with a thud, he jogged to the tree line, stopping and looking back. None of them seemed to know that he was there, that is until one guard turned her head to the window and spotted his figure outside. There! Outside! He widened his eyes and quickly turned, sprinting with magically induced acceleration throughout the forest. Go! Go! Do not let him get away or the queens will have our heads! Queens? He shook his head as he kept running from clearing to clearing as he tried to shake the pursuers rustling the shrubs and bushes behind him. Using everything that he taught himself and learned from the Alicorn Amulet's power, he kept himself ahead of the guards both in flight and on the ground. Going up the slope of a hill, he saw another squad off to the side of the trees, circling around to cut him off. Seeing a web of vines up ahead, he smirked, flying up again and whirling through them. The guards chased after, but as soon as they touched the vines, they stuck to it, as if it were a spider's web. 
some of the trees and plants actually came to life and pulled at them, tearing off their armor and swallowing them underground for God only knows what kind of fate. Seeing his pursuer's body count rise, he launched up to the top of the trees, using the branches to stay above and below the guards. Luckily for him, he managed to cloak himself into the darkness, finding a place to stop as the Alicorn amulet was beginning to react negatively to the chase, his fear for being captured making a turn against him. Clawing at the tree next to him, he fought back against the corrupt grips of the power infused with the amulet, attempting to calm himself down as he did to ensure control was held. He looked down at the Alicorn amulet as it was seeping a black smudge from the gem, pouring out slowly onto his body. He growled as he gripped the bark tightly, tearing into it as he gritted his teeth violently. Remember, Scorn. Control the amulet. Fight them back as an outlaw, not a... Not a... He felt more of the smudge drift over him, going inside the suit as he looked down at the guards looking around for him. These ponies, they... They're, they're herbivores and I can... I can smell them. The, the sweet, sweet juices, they're so... So... He twitched in place before his body went limp. All the guards turned to him as he fell out of the tree, hitting the ground with a thud. There! Quickly grab him before- The voice didn't have time to finish before one of the chains silenced it, skewering the guard through her face. A multitude of other chains thrashed around with Scorn's wrist wires as his body convulsed painfully. He rolled to and fro as the sludge covered his entire body inside the suit, the mask now breaking at the jaw and creating a large, horrifying maw filled with bones. Jagged bones. Not teeth, not flesh, just bones. So it's really true then? Twilight looked down at her notes, glancing through the various things that she's written down as questions and answers with Sunset Shimmer. Despite not getting personal, she's gotten a lot about the human. She has no need to do tests on him. From what Zakora told her, his anatomy is almost identical to a pony's, save for the extra horn and wing appendages, and his structure resembling more of a monkey than an equine. During the time of her interview, the royal sisters made their debut to the party, enjoying themselves with the crowd, and even allowing Gleaming Shield, Twilight's older sister, to mingle with the ponies that she protects. Princess Celestia had sat down with Twilight to learn about the human herself, and has found out some troubling things that gave her pause. Zakora was showing animosity towards her, almost in a hostile fashion. She explained her reasons, and that the princesses should already know about the human, but this turned out to be false. Miss Zakora, I have not seen a human for nigh 12 decades. No pony in Equestria has the power to summon entities from alternate realms. To do so would require one to break the boundaries of reality itself, a feat that my sister and I are, well, incapable of doing. This caught Zakora off guard. She was sure that day, 12 years ago, that it was the royal sisters she saw to try to take the young human away for their own needs, but if this turned out to be untrue, then who was it that she saw? Alternate egos? Copycats? Doppelgangers? It confused her, and she would have to relay this to Scorn when she got back to the hut. Looking up at the clock, she found it to be late enough to head home. While I enjoyed my time here, I believe my departure is near. She pushed back her chair, finishing off one of Pinky's delicious cupcakes. Your questions continue to rise, but I cannot be the one to abide. Your answers lie within Scorn's mind, so please approach him when he's not in a mental bind. Princess Celestia stood up, nodding as she took Zakora's hand into her own. You have my word, Zakora. My sister and I were not involved with this human until today. We have not even heard about him until Twilight sent me a letter informing me of his new... occupation. She gave a cheeky grin as she stepped away. To be honest, Equestria needs more guardians. While I do have faith in my royal guards, it often comes down to the elements of harmony alone to banish evil. Having someone else to watch over my ponies is a blessing in disguise. However... She frowned as she closed her eyes. I cannot say I approve of his methods, even if I understand that my ponies have been unfair and unjust towards him. We are facing a time of peace, Zakura. Having a marauder shedding blood on the Secret Kingdom's land is unacceptable. That you will have to tell him yourself, Princess. My word on that subject is useless. Celestia nodded, sighing as she knew that if she were to catch up with this dangerous vigilante, she would have to show him the way of her kingdom, and give him the friendship that he deserves, even if what he saw that day he arrived warped his mind. I see. 
Very well then, Sakura. I wish I could have met the human today, but his displacement is once again understandable. I will not pray. A distant feral cry broke the three from their conversation, Zakora's ears flattening as a horrified expression laced her features. Oh no, not again. Twilight stood up. What was that? Zakora, what's going on? The helicorn amulet has taken hold. Something has caused Scorn's weakness to show. Both of them shared Zakora's expression, knowing full well what the amulet can do when unchecked. Zakora herself only narrowed her eyes. The only weakness he shows is fear, and that means what troubles him most is near. She pointed at Celestia. You have spewed lies and deceit. How many guards have you sent for his retreat? The princess only backed away. M Miss Sakura, I have... I didn't send any guards. She turned to her captain. Gleaming shield! The white unicorn with a mane and tail perked up, dropping her plate of cake and speeding over to Celestia, saluting her with a fist on her heart. My princess... Take your squad and go to the Everfree Forest, and quickly. Right away, Prince. No! Zakora stepped between them. Bringing more of them will only cause further turmoil. The royal court only brings his blood to a boil. She rushed to the door, grabbing her cloak along the way. I must hurry, for if I do not, whomever he has encountered will be made into curry. Oh, amulets are so risky. That's why you gotta use a gun. Only if applicable, though. Anyway, let's drop the gun talk and let's get on to our powerful donators. Top donators, Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, and Pony Man. Courier Crucii, Delta Omega, Strix, RuneSlith9852, Dospo, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Hunter Norman, Austin Rowland, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brethren Mordred, Cerberus, Goulash Eating Hazar, Starlit Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David D. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F., Rainbow Dash, Teal K. Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Raquel, and Mr. ECU. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.